How can you save time with Microsoft Outlook? Hi, I'm Dawn. In this online training, we'll look at four ways to automate email responses. Templates, signatures, quick parts, and automatic replies, often referred to as out-of-office replies. There are several different ways to build templates or boilerplate text for Outlook messages. The easiest approach is to create short, quick, customized responses you can add to any Outlook email message. To create or access templates in Outlook, first create a new message or reply to a message you've received. Then from the Message tab in the ribbon, choose View Templates. You'll see a display of sample responses such as I'll reply later. And what's common in my household, what do you want to do for dinner? As you hover over each one of these, you can see that you have the option to delete them or to edit them. If you want to create your own, then you would move to the plus sign for that template. First, you would have the title for that template. And so, for instance, let's say that you handle incoming RFP responses, so requests for proposals. So that would be your title for this. And then you would simply tab or click into then the body for this. So any kind of standardized response that you might have. This could also be copied in from other documents that you have. It could be a copy and paste. And you could continue with this one. So because it's something that we can edit, we could always update things like time frames or other contact information. At this point, then we can save and it becomes one of our options. So for instance, now I could add this to the body of my message and make any necessary edits for this as well. So one of the advantages of templates is that you can add multiple templates to one email response, as you can see. They're also really easy to use, to edit, to update, and even to delete. The trade-off, as you might notice here as well, is that they are basic with no formatting. So weigh whether or not templates has a fit with some of your email responses. Preset signatures are frequently used for outgoing messages. Now for a majority of messages, you likely will use a default signature. This might include your full name, position or title, phone number, website, social media, and other contact information. These are often standardized within organizations, although you may have some flexibility to build your own. To be more productive, you can create multiple signatures, such as a default for work, replies, and personal email. Try one of these two techniques to create or modify signatures. If you're in a new message like we are here, from the Message tab, we can go to Signature. You may already have some existing signatures, but if you want to add new ones or even edit the ones that you already have available in Outlook, you would simply choose Signatures. The other way to get to this is from the main Outlook window, you would pick File, Options, click the Mail tab, and then choose Signatures. From the Email Signature tab, if you want to create a brand new signature, you would then simply choose New. Notice that you can delete or even rename existing ones as well as edit them. So for instance, Let's say that here for this business one, I want to edit that. I can simply click into the body of it, and we have formatting options available to us. We can add images. We can add a hyperlink. But let's just say, for instance, that we want to add a title here. And then at this point, we have the option to save. If it's a brand new signature, then you can start with new and then name this. So keeping in mind that these will be listed alphabetical order. So for instance, if you're responsible for responding on behalf of other people, you might list any of those signatures with their initials or their names so they're grouped together. Planning this out ahead of time is helpful for the organization of your signatures. In this case, I'll put in here 
that maybe this is a personal signature when I'm replying email. Now in this case then we could format this, select it, and you can select from the available formatting options just as if it was an, a regular email or a document. Decide what your font is and even if you want to make other kinds of formatting changes. Towards the right hand side we have the option here to for instance add an image or to even add a hyperlink or a link let's say to a website. Once you've completed that of course then choose save and it will be one of the signatures that's in your list. Towards the right hand side here we can pick the email account we want to customize, how we respond to new messages, which one of these signatures we use for that, and then how we might respond to replies or forwards, that is you're responding to someone who might already have that information. So this could be a standard reply that can include additional text. After you finish creating or editing the signature then of course you can choose OK. And then these signatures are available to us from this drop down. But that's not all. Signatures can be much more than just include your contact information. Let's say that you send a few basic messages over and over again such as a reply to request for product information or follow-up response. Let's look at this again. So we'll go back to Signature, Signatures, and here we have obviously not a real-life marketing reply, but the idea here is that this can include any of that standardized boilerplate text that you might be using repetitively. This is a lot faster than saving this text to a draft message or to a Microsoft Word document where you have to paste it in. Here is a potential subject line. You could fill in the blank. This could be paragraphs of standardized text that you want to use automatically. And we have another similar response. The number and content of your customized signatures is really only limited by your imagination. What email responses could you automate through the use of signatures? I'll cancel out of this just to show you that idea. So for instance, if it was the marketing reply, now I could simply highlight this Control X to cut or right click to cut. Come up to the subject, Control V to paste or right click and paste. And so there's my subject line. I could fill in other information. We could even populate this with additional text. So consider how you might use customized signatures for your follow-up or your responses. And some of the advantages is you can create multiple signatures for responding for different topics even on behalf of different people. Keep in mind however that although you can create over a hundred signatures, you'll likely want to limit these a bit so you're not updating them all if there's a change to contact information or other details. Another advantage of signatures is they can include paragraphs of formatted text as well as images and links. The trade-off is you can only have one signature per message. If you want to have a lot of repeat content, then quick parts might be a better option if you have a lot of different pieces that you'd like to plug into a message. Whether you are composing a new message or replying to an existing message, quick parts might be one of the most time-saving ways to easily build a message. You can use quick parts to store or reuse boilerplate text and content you want to use on an ongoing basis. These might include responses to requests for information, common replies, or other repetitive content. To create a quick part, the easiest thing to do is either reply to an existing message or create a new one that contains the text you want to reuse. So you simply need to be able to have access to that text. In this case I'll reply to this particular message. So this text is actually text that I received 
at one point in reply to an inquiry about working with this particular agency. We would highlight the text that we want to store. So this could be something that you have as an old message. You just pull it up from your sent uh, folder and you highlight that content. All of the formatting and content, that will all be stored as part of a quick part. Next, we move to the Insert tab. Towards the right-hand side in the text group is Quick Parts. From here, we can see existing Quick Parts that we have. And one of the options then with that is that we can save the selection to the Quick Part Gallery. Notice that these also have specific categories that you can create. So I'm going to save the selection to the Quick Part Gallery. What do I want to call it? Here I might call this Supplier Resources. Where do I want to store it? That will be in Quick Parts. What's the category? Well, there's General. Proposals is one that was created. And maybe I will create this as a new category that I will call Suppliers. What's the description? This is optional, but the more specific, it can be helpful there. Where do you want to save it? By default, it would go to this template, normalemail.dotm. And then there are options as well for how it's inserted. In this case, we'll move forward to OK. So now that is stored as one of your quick parts. Let's go ahead and create a brand new message. And when you want to work with the quick parts, simply move to Insert, Quick Parts. You will see each one of these as a possibility. And when we hover over the one we just created, notice that we see then the label for that, the category for it, and the description as well displays. So from here, I'll simply select it. It will be added to this message. And notice that even if it was a lot of content, which this one is, it all is part of this email. But the big advantage here is that not only does it include formatting, links, and graphics, but you can also use multiple quick part entries within one email message. At any point, if you want to edit those, as you move to the quick parts, right click, and you'll notice that here are some options. One is that we could organize them, and that means that we might rename some things or put them in different categories. You also would have the flexibility, because there are multiple ones here, that you could insert at the current position, move it to the beginning, the end. So lots of flexibility with quick parts. The only trade-off with that, and there really isn't a big downside, is if you create a number of quick parts, you'll probably be pretty attached to them. And you'll also want to make sure then that you back up the file where they're stored before you might be upgraded to a new computer. Otherwise, you'll have to build them all again. If you wanted to share them with other people, one option would be then to copy that template file, that normal email.dotm file, or you could potentially add them all into one email, and then that would mean that someone else could then create these quick parts as they wish. How could you leverage quick parts to save time and to more easily automate your email responses? In Outlook, the automatic replies or the out of office feature tells people who send you email when you're not available to respond to their messages. This time management tool requires a Microsoft Exchange server account or Exchange Online through Office 365. Standalone versions of Outlook running on individual computers do not support the out of office feature. To turn automatic replies on or off, first click the File tab. Then choose Automatic Replies from the Info tab. Your next step is to choose Send Automatic Replies, and then ideally then to specify what that time frame might be. So for instance, the starting and the ending for that. 
always check as well your message. So in this case, we'll make a few updates. And this is one of the <laughs> challenges we have. That is, sometimes you'll probably have seen these where you get an out of office response and it has an old message that hasn't been updated. So it's not just a matter of turning it on. It's also a matter of confirming that you have updated information. Additionally, one of the things that's really valuable is that you can have a different response for inside my organization versus outside of my organization. And then you can have this automatic reply indicating perhaps who they should reach out to. It could be to anyone or only your contacts. So it can be highly customized. This can be formatted as you wish, can include different size fonts, and can be tailored then to your audience. As you consider your out of office message, although it can be engaging, you really don't have to be clever or creative, just be clear with your communication. It should include at least these three things. How long will you be gone? When will you return? And who would be the alternate contact if it's urgent. However, like your signatures, your out of office message can also be an excellent opportunity to connect in other ways. This could be, for instance, lead generation. You could share newsletters, upcoming events, or perhaps indicate your company is exhibiting at a conference. Perhaps content promotion. Do you have recent blog posts, white papers, or other free downloads? Another thing that could be indicated within your messages might be a social media engagement. Share links to social media for your brand or for new products. Additionally, these can be customized a little bit further, and that is through rules. So you'll find this as well within your automatic replies. The way that rules work is that this simply gives you the ability to, for instance, forward a copy of messages from a specific group of contacts. So for instance, if, if it's coming from a key client, that it could then be forwarded to someone else who's responsible for that communication. As you can see, rules can be highly customized. Consider how those might be helpful for you when you're building your automatic replies. Once you turn on automatic replies and return to the office, how do you know this feature is enabled? Well, it's pretty obvious right here is that we can see it listed here, but let's go back to our inbox. From the inbox at the top, we'll see that we also have this prompt that automatic replies are being sent out for this account. So from either of those locations, we have the option to be able to turn it off. As you saw, some of the advantages of working with automatic replies are that you can tailor your out of office message to your audience, including internal, external, or using rules. And by applying automatic replies, you are more easily able to set expectations and communicate when you may not be accessing your email. Frankly, there's not a big downside to leveraging this feature. You will want to make sure your messages are updated for each time you are out of the office. And then, of course, remember to turn it off once you return. Now you've seen how to save time and effort by customizing and automating your work in Outlook. We explored working with templates, signatures, quick parts, and automatic replies. I hope this has helped you to be much more productive with Microsoft Outlook.